Hello, Mr. Harstam. Here's a new complaint about Terran. This race is so stupid broken with mules and BCs. The fact that BCs can jump all over the map without having vision there, not like warping units with Toss or put down a Nidus Worm, is just broken. Even that you can't attack them while jumping in, like you can at warp ins or upcoming Nidus. I know that my early game was less than mediocre and my response was rather bad. I managed to deflect the first incoming BCs and counterattack. I get the Terran down to zero workers, but Mules saved him the day. I don't want to complain about imbalance in general, because I know that BCs can be deft in several ways, but in lower elo it's close to impossible. My queens were on 2-2 upgrades while Terran stuck at 0-0, but still no way to get him out of my match. To talk about Yamato is unnecessary. OS queens, without even having the option to transfuse them back, is for sure not broken, I guess. I guess this is sarcasm. So, Captain, is it Imba or do I suck? Best wishes, GXT82. Race Zerg League Diamond MMR 3.5k on the European server. The main complaint seems to be battle cruisers. Um, he thinks that Yamatos are a bit of a joke as well. And I think there's something about mules in there too. Um, the Yamato bit was great. I like that this is the, the Zerg privilege that they have, you know. Is that they want every unit to be capable to live forever with the help of strange shoes. I think it's completely fine that there are things that die in one shot. If there's anything that should die in one shot against a freaking six supply unit that costs 400 minerals and 300 gas. I think the queen... Is definitely a unit that should die. It is a two supply unit that requires nothing but a spawning pool and costs 150 minerals. I always find it absolutely insane that Zerg's there complaining about something that kills Queen too fast. Queens have infinite HP, they have the ability to heal one another, you get them as a macro mechanic, and on top of that, they're basically free as well and they cost no gas. Like it is. And then you complain. That a freaking capital ship, literally the most expensive unit for all of Terran, one of the most expensive units in the game, is capable of having a spell that he can use, what, once every minute. And he can one-shot your two-supply tier minus one, 150 mineral two-supply unit. Yeah, I think that is actually fine. And that's the way we start today. But let's not be too harsh here on GXT. We haven't seen the game yet. Maybe he will show us something. That will make me believe that the teleportation of the battlecruiser is too powerful. Or that Zerg just doesn't have enough tools to quite deal with the battlecruiser. That of course is very possible. 19 workers to start with, all on minerals. We don't have a single gas being taken yet. Which is a little bit surprising. Because this is just oversaturation in the main base. Um, and as your natural isn't done, it's just better to mine from your gas. It's more optimal to mine from a single gas right now than have to catch catch that up later yep with two gases like right right here it's gonna cost you two drones and then it, yeah your your speed is probably going to be delayed and i don't even think it's that much better with minerals because uh you're mainly just oversaturated in your main base at the point that you want to play off a single gas anyway so this early game is as he said less than mediocre it is quite bad I usually kind of judge it by what the standard is and how well you follow it. I feel like this guy invented his own build order and then also executed his own build order pretty poorly. Um, which is of course possible. You can make an invention and then also execute that invention poorly. Like technically if you would play some type of 2 gas, I, I would probably pull out of gas too at this point to only have 4 mining. But it's just not that great of a build. It's just a bad invention perhaps. Uh, that, that might just be the issue. It's floating a fair amount of money as well. No third hatchery yet. Meanwhile, at the Terran's base, we have... What is this? A barracks producing marines. A starport coming down. Two gas already mining. It looks pretty standard, except for the fact that there's two marines. So it was a reaper into reactor, which is kind of non-standard. This Zerg hasn't built a single unit, by the way, yet. Oh, I see this again. Is he not aware that there's Reaper walls? I think that's actually what's the case here. So look at this. 
He's not paying attention whatsoever to his main base. He thinks that the perfect way to keep the Reaper out is by just walling the front and keeping the Queen in the wall, not realizing that there's a Reaper pathway here and that there's a Reaper pathway here. Look at kind of the surprise on this Queen's face. We're just gonna imagine a face on this Queen, okay? Just wait, once this Reaper jumps down, he's in the wall, he's like, ha, <laughs> base secure, and it's like, what? Where did this bad boy come from? Then he still needs to move there. It, this is like a ZVZ build almost. Well, this is actually just practically a ZVZ build. Like a two-base Roach opener in ZVZ. Or like a two-base Nidus. Where you you put down two Evos. But even then, the second Evo is slightly later than it is over here. So even for ZVZ, this wouldn't be the correct build. Also with ZVZ, you actually open up with a single gas and not with double gas. Queen count is... Well, it's at two. Now he's building three Overlords. Speed and 1-1. One, one. His build is all over the place, honestly. Like, there are some things... It, it really just feels like he's making a cocktail of everything he's seen in the past in, like, different games. But he doesn't really seem to care about matchup. He's like, oh, I know that speed is good for my links because I needed to deal with Hellions. Then he's getting double upgrades because, because that's what you do when you play a 1-1 one -one Roach timing against Terran. But you usually do that off three bases. Or, well, you always do that off three bases. Now he's building some safety Roaches. I'm honestly shocked that he's up 14 workers. Um, probably mainly because his opponent is not doing much of anything either when it comes to the worker production. His opponent is mainly focusing on getting starports out at this moment. And gathering a lot of gas, I guess, for well potential BCs. But for now, it's just going to be Banshees. No scouting has really occurred yet from the Zerg side either. The Zerg is aware, however, um, 4 minutes and 40 seconds into the game, that there's two depots on the side of the Terran. So, um, yeah, he has a lot of information right now. Two depots, that's for sure. Nothing else. I also saw two, two Hellions already. We have some Roaches in production. Three more Overlords. He's really just moving from Supply Block into Supply Block and then adding three more Overlords. I think he got Supply Block at 36, built three Overlords. Now Supply Block at 60, he's building three Overlords. I wonder what the next step is going to be. I guess 84 and then three more. No. He's preempting it by building two extra overlords right now. Not quite necessary, but uh, I guess you'd rather anticipate your future mistakes than fall into the same traps once again. So I can't really complain too much about that. 1-1 one, one is going to finish up. Now, usually this is a this is a really cool concept, which um, most of you will be kind of familiar with, but perhaps GXT82 isn't quite, and that is the timing attack. Or upgrade timings. Generally, when um, when you are doing some type of upgrade, you're either using it for a defensive timing or for an aggressive timing, or to just get a, a a big advantage later on in the game. So he rushed out these Evo chambers, cutting a lot into his own economy. The latest third base, um, and then the question is, what is he going to do with that? And he's actually going to go for a timing push and even though this push by its well okay he's just gonna go home even though this push i was gonna say by itself isn't that impressive and doesn't look very powerful i like the fact that he still has the idea that hey i i got some upgrades and now i want to use them so even though i think everything about this build order so far has really been bad like the optimization of this build order is terrible the idea behind the build order is terrible the execution is bad. I like that at least the, the the general concept of getting something and using it is there. I I much prefer that over some people that just rush out upgrades and then never use them or don't appreciate that advantage or don't appreciate how much they need to cut in order to get those quick upgrades. So I do like that he's moving out with this, even though it's not a very good push. Two Banshees are on this side of the map. There's no real detection. There is no anti-air either. Now, these Banshees are hitting almost a minute and a half late already. So, I'm actually impressed that he managed to survive up to 3.5k MMR in Diamond without having any type of anti-air or any type of detection until the 7 minute mark. As these Banshees now start flying back. Still didn't build a spore in the main base. It's getting a macro hatch in the main base though. I'm not even sure how it's possible that you can spend your money off of, what was it, 40 workers while you have a third base and you're playing two base roach all in like the income really isn't that high you're gonna have plenty of larva 
I'm not quite sure what the macro hatch is for, but I guess everyone macros differently. So he kills every single last worker at this point. Um, so this is kind of what he alluded to in his imbalance form as well, right? He said, I get the Terran down to zero workers, but then the mules are just a bit too powerful. When you say something like that, it sounds really cool, but often it isn't just the mules, but also what's left over, right? And in this case for the Terran, there's two battle cruisers and two banshees left over. Like, this isn't necessarily eco in itself, but it forces a response out of the Zerg and it's going to deal damage. So you can't just say, well, I was up 30 workers. Like, if I, if I all in a Terran player and I lose 50 army supply, but I kill 35 workers and then I complain that I lost because I didn't kill a single army unit, everyone will look at it and go like, well, that makes absolutely no sense. It's kind of the same here. Like, you need to still have uh, defensive preparations for the counterattack. The counterattack often is the thing that you die against if you're doing some type of heavy pressure or all in. And in this case, there's going to be freaking. Oh, I think three battle. Did one die? No, three battle cruisers total. So, yeah. And with Yamato, you're just going to need a lot of anti air. Now, a good tool against the, the battle cruiser. It's well, actually, Neural Parasite is a decent tool. So getting the Infestation Pit actually makes some type of sense, especially if you're very low eco. I don't mind it too much. But of course, the Spire also is very good. Getting Corruptors against Battle Cruisers, yeah, that's brilliant. You get, what, 14, 15 Corruptors, and boom, Battle Cruisers all of a sudden aren't all that useful anymore. They will still get a Corruptor every single time they move in, but then they need to teleport out or they'll lose the fight because Battle Cruisers don't actually fight as well against Corruptors. However, if you're constantly fighting with queens um, away from spores and not even with your entire queen count what's going to happen is you're just going to bleed out queen after queen after queen over time you never get a very good queen count and also you're not going to get a, a a big enough army to truly kill this you need something to get these battle cruisers away from your side of the map and while queens are good at defending they can't really force a unit away. The only unit that can really do that for the Zerg is indeed the Corruptor or a counterattack. If he would have built rather than 16 drones when he was being attacked by the two BCs and the one Banshee, he would have built like 10 links and 10 drones. He, he, could, he would have been able to keep the air units at home for a long time because there was nothing defending on the ground, which means even a very small amount of links could have denied the mules from mining a lot and could have also denied uh, the SEVs from mining maybe force them all to go to this base which does have a planetary but then you don't have any SEV production from that base because uh, you know don't work like that uh, Hydra dance being built um, so the Hydra then in this case is kind of similar to the to the Queen in a way I don't mind the Hydra as much if it's done in combination with the Viber obviously it is not the correct unit here like Theory-wise, if we would ask any high-level Zerg, they would tell this player right now, hey, buddy, we're, we're going to need to get some type of Corruptor to deal with this. Um, it's just a fact, like, there's, you know, there's freaking battle crews out. We're going to need Corruptors. It's just, it is what it is, you know? I've spoken with a lot of Zergs in my time, and I can't remember a single time where a Zerg told me that it's a very wise idea to move across the map against double port battle cruiser with pure queens. Now, I haven't discussed this scenario a lot either. Maybe once or twice it came up. But I don't think they ever said, hey, Kevin, you know what? I really do believe that marching across the map of creep with a queen count of, what is this, 10? Yeah, somewhere around 10. Uh, they do have 2-2 two, two upgrades. I've never heard of the 2-2-10 two, two, queen push against four battle cruisers. Because even though the upgrades sound really cool, let's not forget that this is a tier 1 unit that costs 2 supply and is 150 minerals. Well, he's fighting against capital ships that cost 400, 300, and have an ability that can delete one of the queens instantly. So, technically, this is a 6 versus 4 fight. Because you get to delete four queens for free. And then all of a sudden, you're like, hey, wait a second. This is freaking 24 supply of the of the, of the the Terran capital ship. And this is what? 12 supply of a tier one unit of the Zerg. And it's not even in its element, you know? It's off creep, where it's worse because it can't kite, can't do anything. 
kind of predictably, the queen is going to lose this battle. And the response here is actually going to go to be to go into Hydras. Um, this just doesn't make a lot of sense. You're losing your initial attack with pure queen. And after your attack fails, you start moving out with the rest of your army. There is actually another thing with, that is kind of interesting here. And I kind of want to go back to this fight for that. So this fight, even though it was not a good fight to take, took a very long time. An extremely long time. This fight took almost, what, 30, 35 seconds. Imagine if this ground army was with it. Not to attack the battlecruisers, because Lynx and Roaches obviously can't attack uh, battlecruisers, but just to clear anything on the ground, either whether that's depots, SCVs, trying to deny some type of production. That would have just been really helpful, and maybe even kind of get the attention away from the queens. Then the Terra needs to make a decision. It's like, hey, do I defend my SCVs, or do I kill the queens? And most of the time they're going to try to defend the SCVs. In that case, your queens are still going to be useless because they're off creep. But that's a story for another time. Hey guys, quick intermission here to tell you the full story that just happened. Some of you might have seen it on the minimap. He actually did push out with his whole army initially. He had the Zerglings on the left side. He had his Roaches and Ravagers on the right side. And the queens were kind of wandering around the rock or something. But then the unthinkable happened. A single Reaper poked into the third and started to attack the hatchery. But of course, this was immediately answered with an F2 back home to deal with this insane threat. And since queens are not included in the F2 command, since it would kind of mess up all your macro cycles if you pulled all your queens away from your hatcheries, they were kind of left alone at the front to die. That's the story. Back to you, Kevin. I mean, this fight takes a very long time. I also yeah, I, I just don't think it was a good move. Honestly, before this, I think the game looked pretty good. During all of this, let's not forget, the Terran kind of um, SCV'd up, worker up, droned up, SCV'd up, all the way to 60. So right now, this started with a regular all-in, now it's like some type of super all-in. And there's still no real answer to the battlecruisers. All of these are kind of soft answers to the battlecruisers. Like they might deal with them if you have enough Hydras and there's not enough PCs. But it's not really a counter like the Corruptor is. If you would introduce uh, Vipers in the mix or maybe even Investors for Neurals, I could kind of see it. Once again, I'm being pretty generous to the Zerg here because I, I really do believe that Corruptor is just the best answer. Drones are going on a trip to... To the top side. Not quite sure what they're going to be doing there. Interesting. Did he just kill a BC? I right, killed two BCs already total. Yeah, I can't really fight this properly. It is quite tricky at least. Just kind of get kited. And I think we've had this in a previous IO this as well. Where uh, I think back then it was with Void Rays. Where the Void Rays would just pop in between this area and this area. And then the Hydras need to run around. That's kind of what I mean. The, the Queens and the Hydras have a similar characteristic there. Where they can't really catch anything. There's no catch on it, you know. Even with Stalkers, it's slightly better because you have Blink. Now, they accidentally do get one BC. But it's still, yeah, it's still not great. There's the Infestation Pit already. So I'm really surprised we're not seeing any higher tech. Um, no Hive for potential Vipers. Because in reality, this army still just kind of sucks. I mean, it really does consist of, of four battlecruisers. There's a lot of money in the bank for the Terran. There's a decent amount of workers, but... I actually believe with Vipers, he would be capable of winning this. I mean, there's still 2-2 two, two upgrades against only plus one. If you get in decent range where, you, range where you can just pick them off one by one, I do believe that kind of should be, be fine. The priorities of the Zerg lay somewhere else, though, and that's with these rocks. Um, the scouting has been just very mediocre as well the entire game through. I mean, he's just not aware of anything. In his mind, I guess he's still being outproduced by mass, mass battlecruisers. There's a couple of Thors on the way, which also incorrect out of the Terran. Obviously should be tanks. If you're building mass PC and your opponent is spamming ground units, if you get five, six tanks out, the game is just going to be absolutely over. Now there's Banelings being morphed. I mean, this is just kind of a nonsensical decision it's going to be to attack the planetary but you you always kind of have to wonder what the goal is here so we're go just going to pause right at this moment okay so what actually is the goal right now for the zerg player you would say if you look at his army is to bust this planetary and then go back home this however only makes sense if you have a very large economy yourself just an extremely large economy 
Because in that case, you can waste resources to destroy your opponent's economy, then take slightly inefficient, inefficient trades. But because you're outmining your opponent so much, eventually their supply will keep going lower and lower while you stay maxed because you, know, you, you have so much money so you can reproduce the units quickly. That is a valid Zerg strategy. In this case, however, we have an army and an eco that is not capable of doing that. We have less workers, less bases than our opponent, and uh, part of the workers have been idling over here. Let's just kind of pay attention that he was too lazy to walk back home. Uh, and instead, he just decided to build a new hatchery over here. Rather than sending these drones home to just mine, he just built a hatchery here. This is the type of panic thinking that I need in my life as well. Absolutely beautiful stuff. But yeah, this is an army that wants to win a single fight because he's completely all in. So what would be the correct call here is perhaps to not spend too many resources into blowing up this planetary, but circumventing the planetary by, and this is kind of a, a revolutionary concept, I understand that, by running around it, going towards the left side, just walking up this ramp. That way you don't have to deal with the planetary and all this money can be spent in more hydras or whatever else you want. If you're all inning like this, it might actually be a wise call to also take the queens with you. Because in this case, yeah, if the only thing that you really do care about is a single fight, go wild. You have 22 larvae at home anyway. Might as well start moving out. I wouldn't have minded it at least. Well, it would have made life a little bit harder against these, uh, this battlecruiser uh, teleport. But at the same time, it would have made this army a lot more tanky. Good target fire here out of the Zerg. Takes out a lot of of these uh, Thors, basically immediately. Mm, not the greatest micro right now. I would love to see a couple of spores being built. There's a lot of spores in the main base. All queens should uh, kind of gather together as well. Hydra should be rallied at home. This is obviously a useless uh, attack. I can't believe this hatchery, by the way, is actually going to pay off. Or well, if he starts mining from it. But technically it could start paying off just because he panic built it over there. That makes me sad and happy at the same time. Tors are still being blasted here. The army is well, semi-split and also partially dead. These Tors are going to survive. The battlecruisers over here are just going... I, what has he been doing for the past... I just want to go back for a second. I just want to see what he was up to. Like, what is he looking at? Okay, so he's looking at his army. He sees the roaches dying right now. Doesn't pull back the roaches. Instead, just A moves again with the Hydralisk. Leaves one Hydra to attack the depot. Now he starts targeting. Okay. So all he's focusing on right now is this fight. Now he goes over here, sees the Hydras. There's actually something that I would like to tell you guys. Um, and I know that a lot of you probably don't know this yet. Because I see this a lot in the replays. But if you A-move the same spot 20 times, your units don't actually start attacking quicker. Or if you right-click a factory four times, they don't actually fight quicker. Even if your camera is not on your units, they will still do the work, even when you're not looking. I know for a lot of you middle management managers, this will be an absolutely insane concept that people do work when others aren't watching. But the Hydras will continue attacking the factory if you're not looking over them. And that allows you to organize parts of your organization that actually do require some attention. For example, like putting these Hydras into a safe environment near the spores or moving the spores from the main base into the natural or collecting all the queens together, sending them into the natural as well to defend that or sending the drones that are currently not mining in the main base around going to your hidden base that you built in a moment of well brilliance and confusion and a mixture between the two but i'm glad you clicked the factory 12 more times mate i'm sure it had a big impact this game i'm not quite sure what i think of uh, these hydras trying to target down as many SEVs as they could i actually do believe they might have been able to kill that thor if they would have gone for it immediately but it's hard to say and we'll never know because i can't be bothered to figure it out these better cruisers are going to teleport back home. And I think at this point we're going to see a Zerg that is on, uh, as we call it, on some massive copium. He's down two supply. Uh, sorry, 20 supply. Two in worker supply. He's fighting with six Hydras. Uh, 
against four battle cruisers. I'm not quite sure if he knows that there's three queens in the main base, so I, I don't think so. They have 200 energy after all. In order to get 200 energy on a unit, you must not have touched it in the past, what, 20, 20 minutes or so? Hydra's gonna move across the map. I still like the optimism though, you know? He has a hidden base. Sometimes, what is it they say again? Oh, ignorance is bliss. And in this case, that's really, it's really true because he still believes he has a chance. He's not aware whatsoever of this planetary here. Um, probably due to the insane lack of scouting. Walks into a couple of hellbats. The four battle cruisers kind of predictably loses everything. And now I'm just curious what's going to happen. Our, our lone Hydra here. Henri the Hydra reporting back home to his superiors, telling what's happened. And as he walks home, um, surely in the commander's office something has to be happening. Well, nine more Hydras on the way, because they've worked well. Now, once again, I don't think this is actually winnable. But if this was winnable, why would Hydras be the way to the win, okay? Okay. So far, every single fight you fought with Hydras, what has happened is that your Hydras died and you killed nothing. Now you have less Hydras than before. You have a worse eco than your opponent. Uh, and you know he still has a bunch of battle cruisers getting Hellbats and Thors again. Investors. This is, this is such a good low eco tool. If you can get um, three Neurals off or four Neurals off and you actually take over these battle cruisers, like I said, I still believe you're going to be losing. I don't actually think you're winning the game but that is your only chance it really is just your only chance there's there's nothing else that there is that you can do except for the investor building more hydras obviously isn't the answer now perhaps once again in your mind it is the answer because you don't know your opponent is mining whatsoever but even in that case i wouldn't really mind the investment in in uh in investor. i'm also really surprised that you were just floating 800 minerals just now when absolutely nothing is happening and it's obvious that you need to spend every last mineral into units. And you start chasing this army of creek bonds again. This is... This is very frustrating to watch. It's also frustrating that the Terran sometimes loses a battle cruiser, kind of giving you hope. That's actually what pisses me off more, I think. Is that this Terran is your enabler, you know? He's not buying the cigarettes for you, but... He's basically buying them for you. He's giving you the money and he knows that you're gonna buy cigarettes for it, with it, you know? Yeah. This Terran is the reason you're still smoking. Or well, in this case, getting your Hydra smoked by Hellions, Battlecruisers and Thors. It's really impressive, by the way, that you're not quite wondering where all these units are coming from. Every single time you pop your head in, you see more units. You go like, ah, probably just had a very big bank, right? There's no way he's mining from this base or this base. He probably was on three base the entire game, just like I was planning to be. Because let's be real, that was your plan. You took this as your third, and when that was under attack, you took this as your third. When you believed that was going to die, you panic built this base. No, actually, you built this base as like a semi-macro hatch, so your drones had a place to stay. Absolute madman. Yeah. Wait, did you just reinforce with links? 16 links. You still have gas as well. It wouldn't have mattered, but it just doesn't make any sense. Why would the links help here? It's obvious that the main threat is the battle cruiser. Shouldn't we be... Sometimes I actually think this is completely hopeless. It's like you guys aren't even listening. I've been doing this for like, what, two years now? And every single week, I just get one of these replays. And it's... Look, I don't mind if your mechanics aren't great. You can't click the buttons like 1,200 times a second. But... Links against battle cruisers is just the sheer stupidity. I don't understand it. And no one can explain it to me either. And I'll ask them sometimes. And, you know, I'll ask these people, like... What happened to you? It's like, well, I don't know. It's like, I, I don't think I was thinking. It's like, yeah, I know. I know you weren't thinking, but then why do you send me this replay? If you weren't thinking, like, you can look at this. I'd be so embarrassed if I did that. Is it? It's like, if I really wanted to become better at playing football, you know? And I have the... Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo has a show where you can upload a video 
You upload a video and you ask like, hey, I don't quite understand how to do this technique. And I want to be able to, to shoot a ball for more than 20 meters. And I make a video of myself. And as I start walking towards the ball, I poop myself and I slip. And then I send him that video. Like, what do you expect Ronaldo to say at that point? And I'm not saying I'm Ronaldo. This is a hypothetical, of course. Um, like, I just don't understand it. Who are these people that send it? I would like to know you guys. I'm just so curious who these people behind. And then he leaves without GG as well. As the battle cruisers find the hidden base. Yeah. I just don't know. I really just don't know what to say about this type of stuff. It's just confusing to me. It's obvious that... Well, actually, I don't think you actually watch a lot of pro games. But it's obvious you have some clue about StarCraft 2. When you, you build upgrades and stuff. You had queens. Most zergs that know how to build queens kind of automatically get placed into diamonds. So perhaps that's what happened to you as well. You figured out that there's a hold key for queens and you build more than six. And boom. 3.5k MMR. And then from there on out, I guess you just... Kind of, I, like, your build order, it... It was really bad, okay? If if we're just gonna go step by step, your your build order just 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 straight up sucked. It, it really just sucked. There's nothing else for me to say about it. It was that some two gas, two queen opener, double Evo Roach. You did a crap ton a crap ton of damage with your Roach attack. It shouldn't have, but you did. I'm like, okay, I can I can live with that. You did a lot of damage with that, but everything about it still sucked. Execution, you were floating money. Uh, the idea behind it, none of it made any sense. Whatsoever. There was no creep threat either, even though nothing happened in the in the entire game. Your third base was insanely late. You didn't scout a single time. The only thing you saw were your opponent's two depots. So you get surprised by the battle cruisers naturally. First you get surprised by the by the banshees. Then you get surprised by the battle cruisers afterwards. It's like the entire world is an entire surprise because you're living with your eyes closed. Um, and moving into the mid game, you know he has air units, NPCs. Uh, your response is initially to walk across the map with the only anti-air defense that you have the queen you march it across the map you lose four of them for free against yamato then you lose six of them for free because battle cruisers are better than queens yes deal with it the battle cruiser is like five times as expensive it's three times more supply and you need to go to like tier five to get it as a terran yeah queens are supposed to lose that even if they don't have any upgrades on the battle cruisers that is completely fine then you follow it up with hydras out of all the units that you could have built is Hydra, it's like you watch the loco Iotis with your ears and with your eyes closed and just open them halfway through, you saw the Hydra, it's like, oh, it seems fine, let's go. At least loco built freaking Corruptors with it at some point. Uh, I much prefer the Hydra Corruptor than just the pure Hydra here. You never tacked into Hive either, even though you definitely had the money for it, you had the time for it as well. And, and then you just continue pumping Hydras, Roaches, and then as a the cherry on top of the massive idiotic pie, you you end with 16 links against a triple or four battle cruiser army. It's like I feel like there's absolutely no use for you to even watch this because, yeah, it, 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 there's no ability to learn or there seems to be no ability to learn, and that does sadden me a little bit. I yeah, the battle cruiser isn't imba, the mule isn't imba. You just suck. And that's the way it is. All right, that's going to be it for me today. Uh, I'm going to need to go into a meditative state for the next four days. Not quite sure if I will be uploading videos then because this run uh, really takes it all. I can't do this too much. The heart rate goes too high, the blood pressure goes up. So please, in the future, send me some something a little bit better, you know? S send me like a picture of like a... Uh, something nice with it as well whenever you upload one of these IO this forms because this is it's getting too much for me. Thanks all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you think you actually found something that is truly in balance, don't forget to upload it in the form below. Don't send me emails. I do not open them. If it says IO this in the email, I don't look at it because they need to go to the form. I don't want my email box cluttered with IO this. It's annoying. Uh yeah. Smash like. Bye.